What's going on, everyone? George and Max coming at you with a brand new series. We're getting hyped for the release of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, May 6th. So we're going to go back through the entire MCU. And uh, we hope you'll join us. This is the rewatch. So uh, we start with the first Iron Man film, 2008, directed by Jon Favreau. Max, it's the first film in the MCU. What's its legacy for everything that came after? Oh, George, I think we need more than just, you know, 10 or 15 minutes to talk about the legacy of that film. You know, it, it set the groundwork. It, was, it, it is the foundation of the MCU. Um, and we wouldn't be where we are today without Iron Man. Um, they took, you're going to hear this a lot tonight and probably throughout all of, all of these episodes of the rewatch, but um, Marvel took a big risk in putting this character on the big screen, taking Robert Downey Jr., who um, had his off-screen problems with um, addiction and, you know, basically being Tony Stark um, <clears throat> to a certain extent. And their, their Campbell paid off really well. Um, he was paid some nominal fee of, I don't know, probably like around a million dollars, maybe. I think it was probably less, but- A million dollars, two and a half, three million dollars. Yeah, something like that. Um, and he delivered um, and the film delivered for Marvel. Yeah, so let's, let's get into the film. Um, Tony Stark is a genius billionaire, playboy philanthropist. He's not a superhero at the outset of the film. What do you make of this one as an origin story? Because to me, it's there are great origin stories in the MCU, and then there's Iron Man. It's just in a class of its own as a superhero origin story. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Um, it balances really well the sort of superhero movie cliches and origin story cliches of, you know, we're going to start at the beginning, we're going to kind of build up to who they are as a person. And yet, um, even throughout that, I, I didn't really feel like there was too much that I would have wanted cut from the film, if you know what I mean. Um, one, because I, I don't really know the character that well at that point. I don't know who he is, what his motivations are, you know, who he's close to, um, and how he interacts with them. And I think that was that's really important for what they ended up setting up throughout Tony Stark's character arc within the entire MCU, but just within his own trilogy as Iron Man as well. Yeah. I mean, th this film, the, the story of Iron Man, being this playboy, being this public figure, he doesn't really profile as, you know, as we'll get into in the Avengers episode, uh, he doesn't really profile as the hero type to lay down on the wire and let the other guy crawl over you. Uh, Steve Rogers would say that better than I do. He's going to uh, cut the wire. <laughs> but he doesn't really profile as a superhero. He's not, he's not the hero type, as he says. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he is taken as a hostage, taken to be killed, uh, hired, the Ten Rings are hired by Obadiah Stane to kill Tony Stark, they realize that, oh, it's Tony Stark. We, we're going to ask for more money to do the job. But then Tony sees what his weapons are being used for, what his company's weapons are being used for, and he decides to start working towards the greater good. He tells Pepper at one point in the movie, there is no, there's nothing else but the next mission. And so the, the character arc of the greater MCU is one thing for Tony Stark, but the character arc of this movie shows him already moving towards someone a little bit more selfless than we were led to believe at the beginning of the film. Yeah. And even then, though, I, I think he's still not necessarily a character that you're going to sit down and, and root for automatically. He's not some uh, shining well, he, superhero. He's charismatic think... enough to make you root for him at the outset. He is, but he, he's not your your typical, like, okay, you know, your stand-up guy or your stand-up girl or stand-up person who you're just gonna love, right? He's charismatic, but that doesn't mean that um, you're rooting for him for the right reasons. Um, and I think that is important to note within this movie as well as the larger MCU as well. That's a good point. So speaking as 
a film or speaking of it as a film, um, I'm curious what you think of John Favreau's direction. They took a gamble on Robert Downey Jr. as the star. Favreau wasn't the director extraordinaire that we know him as today. He had done some films, he had, you know, acting, directing, but this was his first huge movie. Mm-hmm. How do you think he handled it? Really well. Um, I think there was the right balance of uh, focusing on Tony Stark and then focusing on the people that um, I think John Favreau probably knew at that point would grow to be important in Tony's life um, and spending time with them and giving them the right amount of screen time. I never felt <clears throat> like um, we were too far removed from from Tony, uh, too far removed from that storyline, because um, everything revolves around him. That is kind of who he, how he wants things to be. Um, and that came through in the movie that things did revolve around him and they continue to do so um, in later films, but especially was um, noticeable in this one. Yeah, Favreau, I mean, we've seen it with the first two Iron Man films. We've seen it with his work in the Star Wars universe. He's a great storyteller. Mm -hmm. And I think as a director, he elevates the quality of the script to a point where he can tell that story in a really, really strong way. And that's really evident in this film because as you said, the story is about Tony's world, but we get to see Tony's world. It's not all about him, even though it is all about him. Uh, we, we get to see Pepper and Rhodey and Obadiah and Stark Industries and all these parties that he goes to and his interactions with Jarvis. So Tony Stark is the center point of the film, but as a jumping off point for the greater Marvel Cinematic Universe, which wasn't even a thing yet, you really get a sense that this is a well-rounded three-dimensional base of a story that you can build on not only with Tony Stark and the characters in his immediate circle but also you can build relationships with other characters from this core group from this core character yep. and I think Favreau does a really good job in this film of establishing what was to come I think you're absolutely right um you know he brought in also really great easter eggs that end up coming back later um which we won't get into right now but um you know there's so much focus on tony stark's impact in the mcu in films that he didn't even appear in um and i think that is indicative of such a a great first effort by marvel in terms of um, storytelling and world building yeah, taking a gamble on Downey, taking a gamble on the character of Iron Man. Yep. Because, you know, he's not, in terms of the comic history, he's not Spider-Man. He's not Captain America. He's not the Hulk. He's not, not even one Thor. Of, he's not even Thor, exactly. He's not one of these greatly known, obviously he's a known quantity from the Avengers comics and from his own comic series, but he's not the one you'd think they'd start with Mm -hmm. and this film absolutely delivers a story that is worthy of being the start of everything it's grown into over the last 14 years so as we wrap up here um why don't we get into some zero to 100 scores mcu ratings rankings uh max why don't you start us off this time on our debut episode Debut, yeah, number one. Um, okay, so I'll start with my, um, yeah, I'll start with the zero to 100 scale. Um, look, Iron Man's a great film. It is the bedrock of the MCU. Um, and I think it deserves a lot of credit for it, uh, for that. Um, that being said, it is a, it is a weaker film um, compared to some of the other projects, but still gets a pretty high score from me. So I'm going to give it an 83 out of 100. Um, and that will knock it down to number 17 
out of 32 on my MCU projects list. Um, no disrespect to what the film is, what it does, but um, I, I just enjoyed a lot of the other projects more. Um, and it just speaks to the quality of the MCU at this point. Yeah. Um, no surprise that we're very close on our, uh, our ratings and rankings here. Um, I'm also going to go with an 83 for Iron Man. Um, I, I think, like, like you were saying, it's just such a quality start. And the reason, as we've been saying over this whole episode, the quality of the film enabled the MCU to go forward. And I think it is because this film was so good that we've had half of the MCU as, as you are saying with 16 projects ahead of it. Yeah. So, uh, you know what, we're, we're going to match score for score here. <laughs> um, and I'm also going to throw it 17th out of the 32 projects. Nice. So that will wrap up this first episode of the rewatch. We're really excited to see where this project goes for the two of us as we move forward through the MCU in the lead up to Dr. Strange in the multiverse of madness. So uh, we hope you enjoyed this one. We will see you back here for our next episode when we talk about The Incredible Hulk. Have a good night, everyone.